To me, it feels abbreviated, kind of a staccato version of the one we pray each week. Perhaps that's why some of the phrases jump out at me. Perhaps it's because of the wording that is so familiar, yet slightly different, that I pay more attention to those words. In the forgive us sentence, I can't help noticing a strong declaration tied to the request we be forgiven. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. I know the concept is included in the Matthew version that we've all committed to memory, but it jumps out at me in Luke's version. Adding everyone makes it so much bigger than the implied everyone in Matthew's language. For me, that's a work in progress. I forgive, and something triggers a memory of hurt or anger, and I need to forgive again. I'm glad Luke didn't say, for we ourselves have already forgiven everyone indebted to us. I have, but I'll most likely need to do it again. And again. Unlike God, whose forgiveness is instantaneous and complete. Scripture tells us God remembers our sins no more and that they have been removed from us as far as the east is from the west. That is a comforting description of God's grace. I like that Jesus the teacher moves immediately from a lesson on communication with God to interpersonal communication. In a time when there were so few options for people and resources were so scarce, people needed to be willing to ask for help from other people and to keep asking until they found someone willing to give that help. We've lost that willingness. We think that as Americans, we're supposed to be entirely self-sufficient and needing help from anybody is a sign of weakness or failure. <clears throat> we also think that people who love us should just magically know what it is we need and should provide it without our being forced to ask. And then, when nobody reads our minds and provides for the unspoken needs, we feel hurt or unloved. That happens a lot in marriages and in close friendships. We think, if you really loved me, you would know I am sad and need a hug and a shoulder. Jesus is telling us to use our words and make our needs known. If we can ask God for food and forgiveness, we can ask our family, friends, and neighbors for the things we need from them, too. He tells us to ask, search, and knock. He didn't say sit around all day wishing that somebody would guess what it is we need. He also reminded us to listen to others when he added that piece about giving a snake instead of a fish or a scorpion instead of an egg. Often we think we know what somebody needs better than they do. They ask us for an ear and a shoulder and we offer a complex plan of action instead of just sitting with them and listening. Or somebody asks us for something, and we offer our opinion about what they should be doing instead of what it is they're asking for us to help them to do. According to this lesson in communication from Jesus, we need to keep things simple. We ask, we search, we knock, we listen, and we respond appropriately. And then the bonus message. If we imperfect near humans know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more can we count on God to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit? It's wonderful to know we can truly count on God, and the gift of the Spirit truly is amazing and wondrous and incredible, and every other kind of superlative adjective that I could ever think of, and more. We have God the Spirit with us all the time. All the time. On our best days and on our stinky, no good, rotten to the core days, the Spirit is with us, offering us all the same good things.
gifts of inspiration, comfort, wisdom, peace, joy, love, kindness, patience, goodness, gentleness, and even self-control. The Spirit is always present, always offering communication, always tuned into our attempts to communicate to. Unlike us, though, the Spirit hears all our prayers, including those that are too deep and too difficult for words that can only be expressed by a groaning of our own spirits. It's an open channel, always. What an amazing God. No wonder we love God. We receive such lavish care all the time. We each have our own personal hotline directly connected with the Holy Spirit at all times. It's an amazing thing, communicating. It's so simple and so complex. And the more we need to communicate, the more we seem to complicate it. But Jesus, the great teacher, made it very simple. Tell people what you need. Ask for their help. Search for the things you need. Knock on the doors you need to open. Listen when people talk to you. Really listen when people talk to you. Do what you can to meet the needs that they present to you. And receive with an open heart that wondrous gift of the Holy Spirit. In response to the lessons Jesus taught, in gratitude for the gift of the Spirit, in awe-filled worship of our God, may we be communicators who clearly make our needs known, who listen well to others, and who reach out to God with ease. Amen.